You ready for this? Let's do it. You'll kill. The Scottish backsword. Known for assaulting Axis positions with his Scottish backsword drawn, Mad Jack Churchill earned his name and the respect of his troops for his famed exploits during World War II. The backsword first came of fashion during the 16th century and is recognized for its basket hilt that covers the user's hand, offering complete protection. Featuring a straight and lethal single edge, the weapon was a brutal slicer and thruster on the battlefield, especially when wielded by Mad Jack. A true wartime hero, Mad Jack eventually served as a commando leader, helping the Allied forces save Europe from destruction. All right, bladesmiths. Captain Mad Jack Churchill may have been mad enough to take a back sword into modern combat. But what I want to know is, are your swords mad enough if called upon to kill? To that end, I will deliver some killing blows to this ballistics dummy. Bill, you're up first. You ready for this? I came here to watch you kill and chew bubble gum. And I'm out of bubble gum. All right. Let's do this. First up, I really like the way the Damascus pattern shows in your sword. Now, your handle, it's comfortable. There are no hot spots. Every cut you do with this blade is sharp enough to cut deeply. Overall, your weapon will kill. Thank you very much. All right, Robert, your turn, sir. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I will not be denied. <laughs> All right, Robert, let's talk about your back sword here. The tip, very pointy, thrust in, easily cuts on the way out. Your handle here, it's loose. It's really wiggling in my hand. But overall, sir, your back sword will kill. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. Today, I'm gonna take your swords and I'm gonna clear a path through this big block of ice. I don't really care what your swords do to the ice. I wanna see what the ice does to your swords. Billy, you look ready to be first. Jay, I was born ready. Nice job. Thank you. I'm sure you could see when I was striking that, the blade flexed all over the place and came right back to where it was in the beginning. Everything's tight. Nice job. Thank you very much. Robert, how you feeling? I'm ready. Good, I'm ready too. Oh, no. I really don't know what to think right now. This right here is where it hurts. It feels like something pulled. Watching Jay scream out in pain like that, I feel that pain as well. It's kind of catching me a little bit back here. I hate that something that I did caused pain to another person. Plus, it's loose. I see Jay stepping off the testing floor. I'm pretty sure this is, this is, it. This is it for me. Bladesmiths, in any one of our finale competitions, 
The way that you design those blades to perform in our challenges is always taken into consideration. And Robert, unfortunately, your weapon has hurt our user so severely that we had to send him to the emergency room. Your weapon has been given a vote of no confidence and cannot move forward in testing. And for that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. First and foremost, I hope that Jay doesn't suffer any long-term effects of this injury. I took my time making sure that everything was safe on this blade. So to find out that I missed something, it's kind of devastating, you know? Billy, your blade is sharp, deadly, and strong, and you are the Forge of Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Woo! I'm the Forged in Fire champion. This is awesome. This is definitely not the way that I hope to win, but I was given the privilege of doing this for a day when I can also honor those who have given me the freedom to do this. This has been an amazing experience, and I'm very blessed and honored to have been a part of it. Lockerbar Axe. The Lockerbar Axe was the weapon of choice for the famed Scottish Highlanders during the 1600s. Featuring a large two-foot blade affixed to a wooden pole, this pole arm was simple in its design, yet lethal on and off the battlefield. Containing a pronounced hook mounted at the tip of the shaft, this deadly weapon could unmount soldiers from their horses with a single blow, then would brutally finish the enemy with either the head of the axe or with its sharp, fatal edge. This medieval weapon still sees virtual combat in video games like Assassin's Creed Unity. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. Now, to find out how lethal your weapons are, I will take your luck of bars and deliver killing blows on this pig carcass. Joshua, you're up first. You ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Joshua, first up, your blade, it's a pork chopper. <laughs> On its thrust, do you see the wound channel? It creates such a big, deep gash. It's fun to wield, it's sharp, and most importantly, it will kill. Good job. Thank you. All right, Jesse, your turn. You ready? Absolutely. Let's do it. First up, your blade has the weight that every chop into something want to keep going. It wants to keep going and going and going to where pretty much took me with it. Good chops, good cuts, and more importantly, it will heal. Thank you. All right, up next, the strength test. Dave? To test the strength and overall construction of your weapons, I'll be hooking the shield, pulling it into place, and then attacking it with the blade. All right, Josh, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yeah. So first off, you took a little bit of deformation here, pretty much where that edge caught some of the studs on that shield. But it's still sharp. It's really a nicely built piece. It's got a good look to it. It's easy to wield. Everything's still solid. Strong axe, nicely done. Thank you. All right, Jesse, your turn. You ready? Absolutely.
All right, Jesse, you can see on your blade here where you've taken a pretty good roll here, and this is sort of a roll and a chip. But everywhere else on this blade is still sharp. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, next up, the sharpness test. And for that, I'll give you to Doug. This is the Sugar King Slice. Now, to find out how sharp your weapons are, I will take your weapons and deliver cuts across these sugar cane bundles. Josh, we are first. Ready for this? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Joshua, you contoured this shaft here so that when you hold on to it, you can really tell where the edge is. I really like that. Overall, sir, your weapon is sharp. It cuts all the way through cleanly. It will cut. Thank you. All right, Jesse, your turn. You ready? You betcha. All right, Jesse, the blade is heavy. It cuts, but also you can feel the weight behind it crush the rest of it. Overall, sir, for this test, it will cut. Thank you. Josh, Jesse, both of you guys brought in finale weapons that performed incredibly well in our tests. Only one of you can be the Forge to Fire champion, and that champion is... Josh, congratulations, you're the Forge and Fire champion. Jesse, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut. Jesse, you brought us a fantastic weapon, and this came down to the finest of details. Your weapon took a bit more damage, and your opponent's weapon was a little bit lighter and easier to control. It's for those reasons, we're letting you go. All right. Jesse, please surrender your weapon. I came here to prove to myself that I'm not, uh, you know, just a backyard knife maker, and I'm ecstatic that I made it this far. All right, Josh, congratulations. You're the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. Please present your blade to the judges. <laughs> what? Are you kidding? Thank you. Holy crap. I'm a Forged and Fire champion. I'm, I'm speechless. the Scottish Claymore. <sighs> the Claymore was used by Scottish mercenaries in battle from the 15th to 17th century. The weapon, usually 55 inches in length, would have to be held with both hands and swordsmen were unable to carry a shield, symbolizing fearlessness on the battlefield. The clansmen would swing the sword in figure eight movements, decapitating and dismembering adversaries. Legend has it that Scottish Knight William Wallace used a claymore in the war for Scottish independence. This epic weapon has been immortalized in the classic movie, Braveheart. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. The term claymore in Gaelic means great sword. To see how lethal your weapon is and to test its functionality according to its historic design, I will deliver two killing blows on this animal carcass. Scott, you're up. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Oh, sh The moment Doug hits the pig and I hear that thud, I'm like, crap. Uh, Scott, we have a little problem here. <laughs> the hardness of your blade is a little bit on the uh, flexible side. It did not even cut the carcass. So that brings into question also the sharpness of your edge. I think and we're pretty much done. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> It will not kill. <sighs> this is a failure. Jonathan, you're up. Are you ready? Absolutely. I'm confident that I made a good blade. 
The blade is hard and it's ready to cut. This is gonna be spectacular. Jonathan, we have a major blade malfunction. It did initially cut through, but then it probably hit the spine. It just exploded. I'm not completely confident that I'm gonna come out with the win here, but my blade cuts, and that's more than Scott's. Jonathan, your blade suffered catastrophic failure. For safety reasons, we can no longer continue testing on your blade. Since both weapons have suffered malfunctions, Dave will now decide on the best course of action to move forward with the competition. In the Viking sagas, swords broke. In the Song of Roland, swords broke. But bent swords can be straightened. So we'd like to give you an opportunity, Scott, to straighten that weapon so we can take it forward into a sharpness test to help us determine our winner. So Scott, why don't you take a moment and straighten your weapon? Okay. That's as straight as it's gonna get. Now, not only was the Claymore a battlefield intimidator, but it was also a Scottish symbol for physical prowess and strength. So what I'm gonna do to test the edge of your blade is I am going to cut into this piece of sheet steel. So Scott, are you ready? Let's do it. I've got a 50-50 shot that it's gonna do well. You know, I just wanna see what happens. I don't even want to watch. Well, Scott, there's actually still an edge here. We can see what it did to the steel. Should have had the pig made out of steel. It probably would have cut better. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, well done. Thank you. Overall, I'm pleased. This was the first time I've ever made a blade of this size, of this complexity. Gentlemen, this by far was our most difficult challenge to date. Congratulations, you both delivered your Scottish Claymores. But there can only be one champion. Scott, congratulations, you are the Forged and Fire champion. Thank you. Thank you, man. Good going. Yeah, thanks. Jonathan, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Please surrender your weapon. It's a great Killed pleasure, you. man. Thank you, sir. I'll be back. Absolutely proud of myself. With every failure, there is a great lesson learned, and I think I'm moving forward from here. Scott, congratulations. You are the Forged Fire champion, and you'll be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. I've never won anything in my life. This is the first time I've ever won anything. You try your best, and you learn from it, and then you do it again until you perfect it. I mean, even though the sword didn't do what I wanted, it's still, okay, I won. I'm certainly gonna be buying drinks tonight. <laughs> the William Wallace sword. <laughs> Big and right. Armed with his gigantic two-handed claymore, William Wallace was known for leading the Scottish rebellion against the English during the late 12th century. Measuring in at a staggering five foot four inches tall, the blade weighed less than six pounds, making it both lightweight and long enough to deliver deadly blows against the enemy on horseback or on foot. Wallace led his troops to victory with his namesake sword during the famous Battle of Stirling Bridge. Memorialized as a Scottish hero, Wallace can be seen wielding his iconic sword in the 1995 blockbuster, Braveheart. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the keel test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your iconic William Wallace swords will do, I will take your sword and deliver lethal blows on this wild boar carcass. James, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, I am. All right, let's do it.
All right, James, talk about your blade here. Pocket knife, it is not. But this long blade actually has a nice weight to it. It's wieldable with two hands. Grabbing on to your handle here, I get a good grip. Your edge is razor sharp. It easily punctures and has a nice draw cut to it. Now, cutting the carcass, as you can see, it cut it in half. And more importantly, sir, you'll keel. Thank you, sir. All right, Lyle, your turn, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right, let's talk about your William Wallace sword here. It's a lighter sword. It's about a half a pound lighter. Your edge is sharp. Now, it cut very deep on this big carcass. It didn't cut it in half, but it did cut. Overall, sir, your sword, you will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, our battering ram chop. Now, why would you attack a battering ram with a sword? I don't know, but we're going to do it anyway. Now remember, this test is not about what your swords do to that battering ram, but how well they hold up. James, you're up first. You ready? Dave, I hate this plan. <laughs> All right, James. Blade is still true as it was when we started. It's comfortable, it's strong, and man, it held up well. Good job. Yeah, I really like hearing you talk about it. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lyle, your turn. Ready? I guess. I guess. <laughs> All right, Lyle, first off, uh, remarkable job making a weapon this big, this light, and hold up that well. That, that's impressive. But the issue is we've got some loosening going on. Other than that, you did a great job. Thank you. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the sharpest test, the foam pitter slice. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about how sharp your weapons are and what they do to these foam pillars that are wrapped in leather. James, you're up first. You ready? Yeah, man. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, James. The edge of your sword is like cutting through butter. It's a nice, clean cut, cuts all the way through. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Lyle, your turn, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Lyle, let's talk about your sword here. Um, first up, the guard is still a little bit loose from the strength test. But when it comes to the cuts, it is a sharp edge that you have here. It did cut the leather, it just didn't cut through. It's a lighter blade, thinner edge over here, but it does cut. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, you guys both brought us back giant William Wall swords that exceeded our expectations. They are the largest swords ever built in this competition, so we want to commend you guys both for that. But there can only be one champion in this competition, and today's Forge and Fire champion is... James, congratulations. Thank you. Lyle, unfortunately, you just didn't make the cut today. I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the floor. Thank you. James, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion. You'll be leaving here with a check for $10,000. How does it feel? Pretty great. Yeah, baby, I'm Forge and Fire champion. Great work. Feels a little surreal. Like, maybe this isn't real. You might find out tomorrow that this didn't really happen.
the Scottish Claymore. Claymore! Yeah. <laughs> Joy. This massive two-handed sword was wielded by Scottish Highlanders as early as 1490. Made famous in modern pop culture by the film Braveheart, its impressive size and length made it a fearsome weapon. The Claymore is easily recognizable by its quatrefoil crossguard and angled arms. Due to its large size, the heavy sword was usually swung with two hands. It was so deadly, it was nicknamed the Slaughter Sword by the English who faced it on the battlefield. Because of its prowess, the Claymore was a mainstay of the Scottish Army for nearly two centuries. First up is the strength test. As you can see, we've brought back a test worthy of a champion's blade. Bullet splitting. Each of your blades will be locked into a vise, then we'll fire a single round at your blades to test their edge retention and strength. If your weapons are strong, should split the bullet no problem. If they're not strong, well, your blade could shatter entirely. Good luck, Matt, you're up first. I'm feeling pretty good about my sword. It's exactly the same heat treat I did last time, and it held up perfectly fine. Three, two, one, engage. Yes. Nice. You got a couple little dimples on the edge there. It's just a little bit dull, but everything held up beautifully. Good job, Matt. Thank you. Ben, you're up. Are you ready? Sure. Let's do it. Got it. Let's get it ready. Three, two, one, engage. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that sucker just fragmented. He's got a lot more profile than mm -hmm. blend. Well, Ben, the only problem I could see is uh, rubbed a little bit of your etch off, did nothing at all to the blade. Edge is still perfect. Thank you. All right, next up is the sharpness test. And I'm going to hand you over to Dave for that. Gentlemen, the Scottish Claymore, as you know, was a brutal weapon on the battlefield. So to test the sharpness of your blades, I'm going to take a single blow through both these front legs of the horse, simulated with sugar cane. If your blades are sharp, they should pass right through. Matt, you're up. Are you ready? Yeah, kill the horse. Matt, this weapon is so amazingly light and flexible as well that when I hit, there was no resistance. It literally passed right through the legs. I was through them before I knew it. Well done, Matt. Really well done. Ben, you ready? Let's do it. All right, let's give it a try. Still down. Yeah. Well, Ben, they cut cleanly through the first leg. Kind of bogged down in the second leg, unlike Matt's. And I have a feeling it's the width of the profile up here, just slowing it down a bit. But I don't think that horse is running ever again. Nicely done, Ben. Thank you. Next up is the kill test. For that, I'm going to hand you over to Doug. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. To see how lethal your blades are, I will take your claymore, and I will try to cut through these pig carcasses with one chop. As you know, last season, both claymores suffered catastrophic failures on this very test. Let's see how much lethal damage your blades can do. Matt, you're up first. Are you ready? Go for it. Let's do this. Didn't break. That's a burn burn. Matt, I love the feel of your blade. It feels very comfortable in the hands. It's very easy to maneuver. It was sharp enough to cut through in terms of lacerating, but it's just so flexible it didn't go through. For this test, sir, it will not kill. I'm pissed at that pig right now. Ben, you're up next. You ready? Hope so. Let's do this.
again. This blade just slides all the way through that carcass. It's flexible. It's got a good feel to the cut. This, sir, will kill. Thanks. Good job. All right, bladesmiths, you've given the judges a lot to talk about. We're going to have to go back to the forge and deliberate. We'll see you there. Thank you. Matt, Ben, welcome back. The judges have evaluated your weapon's performance and construction. Both of your weapons are bulletproof, they're sharp, and they're deadly. But today, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Ben, congratulations. You are our first two-time Forged and Fire champion. Great job. Matt, I have to ask you to surrender your Scottish Claymore. I'm a Forged and Fire champion. That's never going to go away. I don't feel like I failed in this. I don't feel like I'm a loser in this or anything. I just feel like Ben did slightly better. And that's awesome. Ben, you are our first and only two-time Forged and Fire champion. You will also be receiving that check for 10 grand. Your Claymore is a thing of beauty, not only to look at, but to wield. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a loss for words. Thank Beautiful you very job. much. Oh, my god. I am the Fortune Fire champion of champions. I can't believe it. The people I was competing against are so good to actually come out and win this thing. It's absolutely amazing.